And thanks be to God for the reading of God's word. So we are in the midst of what we call breakthrough prayer, and that's what we're doing for the next six weeks. We have a little prayer card out there. If you'd like to get it, I can help you with that. A lot of us have that. We've been saying that and doing that, and, and we've been trying to theme around that, breakthrough prayer. Gracious God, give me the ability to break through the things that keep me from, from you in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. That's our little prayer. And it means a lot. We've been asking to pray that. And I'm going to look at different attitudes and, and different tools of prayer as we are in the season of Lent. And today I want to look at perseverance. Perseverance in prayer. And I thought, what a better way to look at that than with Paul writing this prayer to the church of Ephesus. And the interesting thing about it is he writes it from a Roman prison. And he's been in prison for many years. I mean, Paul had a much better life before he was a Christian than after he was a Christian. And his attitude is so much better when he's in this Roman prison than when he was trying to kill Christians before he became a Christian. It's just something to think about in the midst of the theme, prayer and perseverance. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we are in a six-week journey of prayer, hopefully becoming deeper and deeper involved in prayer, today we're going to not just look at breakthrough prayer, we're going to look at prayer with perseverance. Prayer that wants to persevere. Help us hear you today, Lord, as we listen to Paul and we dig a little deeper in how he can teach us that. And help us, with our mind and our soul, uh, cross with each other and connect with each other in a way that develops a deeper sense of perseverance. Holy Spirit, help us hear you. Help us hear you. Remove the distractions. And Holy Spirit, graciously, but with gratitude and expectation, but humbly, may the words of my mouth not be my words, but your words, as we listen to you and hear you and dig into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So perseverance in prayer, as we look at it, first of all, requires one main thing that we must be willing to do. We must want to persevere. If we don't want to persevere, nothing is going to happen with this message or with our prayer life. Perseverance in prayer is something that Paul really exemplified. I mean, this guy is in a Roman prison. He has planted a lot of churches. He doesn't look like he's going to be released from prison. And to be honest with you, it turns out that he spent his adult life in a Roman prison. And yet he writes these letters to all of the New Testament churches, this one to the church of Ephesus, the people, the Ephesian people. And yet he's filled with joy. It's kind of an amazing thing that takes to my mind a lot of desire and a lot of inner spirit towards God. I can remember it was the week before Memorial Day weekend in May. The year was about 1993. Some of you are like, it wasn't even around then. That's okay, don't remind me. So, <laughs> in about 1993, the week before Memorial Day weekend. So it was the middle to late May. We had gone up to the Boundary Waters, and I was help training guides for the summer for Boundary Water canoe trips for the Minnesota Conference camping program. We got up there Sunday night off the end of the Gunflint Trail out of Grand Marais, we got up at 7 o'clock in the morning, put our canoes into the water, and it's a misty rain. And it's about 38 degrees. And I'm thinking, we're supposed to be having fun. And I'm one of the leaders, so I put a smile on because we're having fun. We get in the water. We start canoeing up into Big Saginagon Lake. We start canoeing, and I'm not making this up. It gets colder. And now it's not just a misty rain. It's a snow-rain mix in the middle of May, and I'm supposed to be having fun. Oh, Lord, I just look at God and go, what am I doing here? The only thing I could think of was, well, I get to go home soon in about three days, four days. And I'm putting on a big smile because I want to be a leader. 
and I don't want him to know that I don't want to be there. And I just smile at him and say, hey, our campsite will be warm tonight. <laughs> Perseverance is something that we want to do. And we have to decide that we're going to persevere. But the reality is we need more than ourselves to do that. Some of you can raise your hand as you have battled through the treatment of cancer or you're doing it right now and you're like tired of it, but you know through God all things are possible. And Paul, in the middle of this prison, sends us what it means to be in the midst of prayerful perseverance. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. This is not a, a, a man who's upset because he became a Christian. This is a man who's filled with joy in a Roman prison and from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. He's not giving up on God. He's sitting in the midst of a Roman prison and he is not giving up on God. I don't even know if I should remind you of this, but being kind of a weather nut, uh, always kind of looking at weather patterns and always being attracted to it and everything, this time last year, any of you remember what the weather was like? In Minnesota, not Florida. This time last year in Minnesota, right outside that door, it was in the high 50s. We had some days that were in the, high, or in the mid 60s, see? You remember that? And the ice was coming off of Lake Coronas only to refreeze again, so we didn't get an early ice out. And people were thinking, hmm, this could be an early spring. And actually, it was a little early. Sorry to remind you of that. <laughs> but we're going to persevere, because we're from Minnesota, and we're going to make it through winter. And by this time next month, it'll be 60 degrees. We'll see what happens. Perseverance is something that Paul deliberately chose in his faith, and said, I am not letting this prison get me down. Now there's some tools that help us with that. And Paul brings them out in the midst of this prayer. The first tool is the Holy Spirit. Paul connects us with that, how he finds strength. And the Holy Spirit is a place where we have to decide to go deliberately. As Paul demonstrates that, it's really a place where the intellect of our mind, because our mind is always thinking, the intellect of our mind and the faith of our soul meet at a crossroads. Did you hear me? The faith that we have in our soul and the intellect of our mind come together at the crossroads of that meeting. That's where we determine that we can find the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to Paul as he demonstrates that in his prayer. This is where Paul's mind and Paul's faith hit the crossroads together and say, and say, I want the power of the Holy Spirit. This is from a Roman prison. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened. See this? This is someone whose intellect, and Paul was a very intelligent dude. Before he was a Christian, he was a high court official in the Jewish belief system. And you don't get that without intellect and without study and without schooling. And the riches of his glory. Does this sound like a man in prison? He may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being. Here comes the intellect crossing with the faith. The inner being with the power through God's spirit. We have to determine in prayer if we're going to take our mind and everything it's telling us and say, Lord, help me cross with your spirit in my soul. That's what perseverance prayer is. And then Paul moves on. And not just the spirit, but we, want, want, we must believe in Christ as a savior, not just as a good luck charm, not just as another religion. Religious prayers are things we do by habit, and if we say it, we think we're going to get closer to God, and God's going to reward us for just saying it. Paul's mind and his soul have crossed together and created a desire for the Holy Spirit and a belief in a Savior that resurrects, a Savior that gives us eternal life. Listen to these words from a Roman prison again to the Church of Ephesus and also to Grace United Methodist Church. 
and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through, not just intellect, but faith. Through faith. That's what perseverance looks like. That's what saying, Lord, I believe even in my unbelief, I believe in you. As you are being rooted and grounded in love. Instead of Paul sitting in that prison day after day, constantly asking, God, why did you do this to me? Why did you put me here? Why are you treating me like this? Instead, he's getting his intellect to cross with the Holy Spirit and a Savior that is resurrected, and he's not giving up on that. That's perseverance prayer. And when we are in the tough of the mud, in the manure of life, whatever that is, we go to that Savior in our faith, and we go to that Spirit, and we say, strengthen me so I can walk through this manure and get out of here and get to another season. But not only that, as Richard Le read from the Scriptures, Paul says we serve a God, and again, this is amazing because it's from a Roman prison, Paul serves a God that is boundless in energy and fullness in love, <coughs> excuse me, in grace. Before I wrap it up, I want to share an interesting story with you. I don't know if you know much or read your history on the, and maybe you know more than I do, I'm sure you do, the Louisiana Purchase. That was when the United States of America was still a very young nation in the early 1800s. And they, they fixed a deal, and they bought what we know as the western half of the United States, the Louisiana Purchase, west of the Mississippi. And then the president sent out a team to explore that whole region of land. Quite amazing. We know that as the journey of Lewis and Clark. And when they started their first explore, exploration trip, they went across the northern half of the west, and then they came back through the southern half. They were hoping to find where this land ended that we know today as the west coast, the Pacific Ocean. They started in canoes. They found the Missouri River. They went up the Missouri River. They hit land. They crossed a little further and a little further. And somewhere what we know as modern day North Dakota, they found the river we know as the Yellowstone River. They got in the Yellowstone River in the very northwestern edge of North Dakota and they began to, to travel the Yellowstone River by canoe again and they thought this is it. We're going to reach the, the ocean. We're going to reach the end of this land and we're going to do it by canoes. And they literally thought that was it. Most of us have traveled across Interstate 94. We've gone through what is called Beach, North Dakota, a fabulous town. I think there's one hotel and a gas station, if I'm not mistaken, on the edge of North Dakota, Montana. And we hit the Yellowstone River and Glendive. And then we get down to Billings, Montana. And what do we see? The Rocky Mountains. Can you imagine Lewis and Clark and their team? They thought when they found the Yellowstone River that they were going to hit the Pacific Ocean. And instead, in canoes. What did they see? The Rocky Mountains. And they began to realize that in order to really finish this right, they had to cross those Rocky Mountains. They didn't even know yet. They didn't even know that they were going to hit another plateau and then the Sierra Nevadas. And they began to realize that the canoes were not going to make their trip successful. And they had to come up with another plan. Because dawning in the sunset, or I should say, that, yeah, the sunset, was these huge rocky mountains that they had to cross over. And canoes were not going to do that. And they had no idea what was on the other side. Paul would like to go to Spain. Because in the book of Acts, he wanted to bring the gospel to all the known world. And the known world in his day was Spain. That was the edge of the world. And he's in a prison and he still thinks he might go. He's not giving up on that thought. But in the midst of that, he perseveres and he writes to the church of Ephesus. And what does he say? I pray according to the riches of God's glory that God may grant you 
that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Spirit. There's the, the mind and the faith crossing. And then Paul says, And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is not a man who gives up easily. This is a man you want on your team. And this is a man that can teach us how to persevere when we pray. This is a man that can help us with perseverance. To be centered in the spirit. To believe in a savior. In a God that never, never ends. Amen. I'm going to spend some time in prayer. Please join me.